Yes. Yes. Send him to the rail. We take those chips. We ride into the sunset. Let's go. Ouch. That is a tough river. That's a tough river. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Welcome back to another stream here on the Poker Staples channel. I'm very excited to play some poker today. Let's get it. Let's get going here. We are all in all day with the ace-jack offsuit. Loving it. Loving the spot. Snap regen. We're not doing so well against that snappy snappy. Oh, we're ahead. That's crazy. All right. Don't pair the board or a 10. Nice. Let's go. Let's go, chat. And we have to stack off with queens. We're not happy. That's worse hand we stack off with here, but uh, it's okay. We are flipping for a lot of money. Let's go, Dottie. Come on. Uh, in a bounty, king 10 suited. I think we're close for what it's worth. I think we call. I think we see the streets. Call. The turn is the dream. Keep it clean. No berry. Ouch. Do we go for the rip city against Barry Uzi with the ace four suited, man? It's like a good four bet bluffing hand, and we definitely under four bet bluff. And we cover for a bounty when caught. And he's an aggressive player. He's Barry Uzi. I think we rip it here. Good luck. Don't have it, Barry Uzi. Do not have it here, bro. Do not. Now is not the time for you to have the hand. No. Hit it. Oh, sick. Diamond. Yes. Yes. Send him to the rail. Send him out. Goodbye, Barry Uzi. Goodbye. We take those chips. We ride into the sunset. Let's go. Now this is a beautiful hand. Some under 20 blind stacks. We three bets. Pretty small. Unlucky for the jacks. We need to hold. Okay. Okay. Four outs. We're dodging. Oh, brutal. That's very brutal. For 300 bucks and two stacks. Brutal, 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 brutal. 900 call. This is good. This is the bounty we want to get. And an overcall. Interesting. How do we get all the money here from Nicholas, you know? I think we just bet turn, right? And unfortunately, they're probably going to fold a lot, but I think we just bet turn. And we're going to call all in and the heads up. I'm just going to wait for this hand to finish. Okay, take it down. That's too bad. We're going to be all in with queens in the 840. Re-enter the 525. Take it down. Okay. And we're going to see bet with our second pair, but... Second enough flush draw, overcard to go with it. I think just a C bet's fine, and that we can kind of contend with whatever here. Should our range go two thirds slash check or like half pot check? I mean, there, you can mix in some bigger sizings on this board as well. With our hand, it's not the end of the world either way. You know what I mean? It's like if we induce them to check raise wide, that's a fine thing for us. 138 in the middle. I mean, what's the alternative? We can make it 160. It's too small. We can make it 200. Nah, I mean, especially with our hand, just rip it, dude. Our actual hand loves ripping it here. Ace King offsuit. It's just like, do we balance this with anything that is an Ace King? The answer is yeah. I mean, there's some pairs that can just ship it here. That's good. That is good news. Let's go, Dottie. Come on. Let's go, Dottie. Come on. It's annoying with Jack Eight, but we're targeting uh, Queen High and maybe some King Highs on the river. Uh, we're gonna go for it here. When check checks flop, they probably don't have ace or six, you know? They might have hit a five, but like targeting high cards with jack high. Turn's pretty easy now, picking up the flush draw, but river's tough, right? If it goes bet, bet, bet. They check, we check. We want to lose the minimum against like these overcard, uh, like these overpairs basically on clean runouts. And then against overcard, it's like, yeah, we could get them to fold equity, but probably not worth it. And then fold the river to two thirds. Raise three bet, four bet in the grand. We call against Nikolai. This four bit sizing is really huge given the stack depth, uh, which is interesting. So I think we call and then on ace, ace high flops, we're gonna be able to get away on the turn. King high flops, probably the same, right? They bet 150, we call, they jam the turn, we fold, or sometimes we get to show down. It gets some hands, you know? Ace queen, but we, but we block. Jacks, but we block. They over bet jam. This is not good. Fold. So limp, raise, call, bet flop, call, turns a three. I think double barrel is good here. 
Cool. Jamming, three betting, and calling are all plus chippy V, but is this the 40 blind jam pair? No, probably nines is. I think we're going to flat here. You got to make sure you find the pair that goes for the 40 blind jam to balance with your ace queen offsuit and your queen 10 suited. Ace king O sometimes as well. A lot more checkbacks here than you'd think. They go kind of big sizing. Let's go. Very good news there. Pick up a nice pot, 46,000. We had to set in the 1K, they've been half pot, we just call. Stacks are not very deep here. We should be able to get all the money in by the river in most scenarios. If they, if they bet themselves, of course, but if they check to us still. So I don't see much point in raising on the flop. They go for the small bet, we call again. Don't think we really have a raising range here uh, at this stack depth, you know. Like, of course, like sets would be hands that raise sometimes, but I don't think we want to. And if we had a value raising range, it'd be vulnerable stuff, which is not this. For the full double up in the 1K. No, but still pretty good pick up there. Yeah, run it. Ace queen, $300 bounty in play against sixes. We got a flip for a lot of cash here, chat. Three stacks and 300 bucks. Good start. Green is great. Let's go. Let's go, baby. 300 bucks coming our way. We're down to 18, 13 pay. We are in a great, great position in this 840 bounty. What do we do against not sure if, I don't know, fold the turn, I guess. Just fold the turn. What's the difference between trips and a set? A set, you start with a pair in your hands and you make the third card. In trips, you start with only one card without a pair in your hand and then you have three of a kind. So functionally, in terms of the strength in the hand, no difference in terms of how it ranks in the hand rankings, but in terms of how you f refer to it, trips, there's two of them on the board set, you had a pair in your hand. Uh, indifferent against the overbet on the turn, but I think it's really difficult for them to balance this because of how wide ranges are, how many draws there are as well. It's like, I don't think with the ranges as wide as they are, that the overbet is a sizing we're gonna see there often. They're going to see like pot, but not overbet. And then they jam the river and I think we should fold. I mean, we don't block the clubs or the higher straight draws. We do block a little bit with the eight. We prefer 10 deuce over 10 eight for what it's worth. Uh, obviously prefer king deuce, five, probably king five. I don't think we want to call off here. We get another really big flop bet, like 80% blind versus blind. I don't know what's going on with these huge flop bets. They don't make a lot of sense. Bet small on the turn, we call, we turn the gin. Check, check, hopefully here. Check, check. Beat king five bluff, beautiful. Back up to 8,000 there, and we turn the king, and we bet. Take it down, okay. Soft bubble here with jack nine. It's not a great hand, but like if we get caught, we're playing for the bounty. And they are gonna play a little bit tighter, I would think, although queen eight is already an edge case hand. I would say. Like they probably fold queen seven in theory for 15 blinds. So my thesis is incorrect. They are calling the same range. No adjustment for the bubble. I think the call is bad, to be honest, I do. I don't think it's a good call, but it's okay. Fives against ace four. We are above starting stack in this 1K now, which is beautiful. To three bet call or flat, I think flat is better. It's gonna be quite tough to get it in preflop against worse hands. Plays really well here as well. We have 700 cash. Rebecca, thanks for lunch, Rebecca. It looks amazing. I appreciate you. Thank you. All good. Bet here, small in position. They're probably gonna check raise often, I'd say. And we're ready to go. We're ready to rumble with this hand. They're gonna have some check raise bluffs and we can get them to fold with the ace high against some check raise bluffs is great. And when they have over pairs, whatever, not a big deal, you know? I think we small bet here in that, um, we're gonna force them to call with ace king and ace queen and ensure that we don't get bluffed, bluffed off our ace 10. We always bet here with full houses as well. So I think it's fine to bet ace 10 here. It's a bad river. It's a bad river. Yeah, it's just such a bad river. Oh, dude. So many bluffers, bluffs our opponent can have here. Jack 10, jack nine, 10, nine, any clubs, any under pairs, all of that. Right, uh, hard to have a queen or an eight. I think we should call down here. We're calling 200K to win half this pot, chopping sometimes, but they should have some bluffs. 
I think we need to call down here. We don't block those straight draws or the club draws. I think it's a good ace to call as well. Roger raises. We're going to call on the big blind here. It's also an option to three bet fold, but I think call is fine. It's a hand that plays pretty well post flop as well. Vlad calls, which honestly changes things a bit. Because this money is like pretty weak. I think we need to squeeze. If Vlad goes all in, fine. But we squeeze to 13-6. Fold to a jam from Roger. But take advantage of the squeeze opportunity here. This bounty is massive as well, 650. So like, if they decide to flat eights and then back raise, okay, we flip, fine. If they've slow played kings, fine. It'd be more likely aces. But yeah, I think it's a spot where we need to squeeze with this hands particularly. Specifically, not particularly. Open the king 10, get a call on the big blind. 10-5 deuce. Bet small. And hope they check raise. And we just peel this check raise. It's fine. We're not folding on any turn. But yeah, I mean, I think we mostly just play call here. Call, call. They check. I think we bet now. Don't really want to get free card here. Let's go. Hold. Diamond is great. Come on, chat. Let's go, man. Let's go. Massive pot coming our way. Check raise, get a call. Queen of the turn. We're all in. Don't have king, queen. I'd cry. I'd cry every Tim. Come on! Don't have king, queen. They had king, queen. It's a five on the river. No crying for me, baby! I think I have the coolest piece of poker software you've ever seen today. It is called Hybrid Poker brand new piece of poker learning software where you test your score against myself, against Daniel Negreanu, against Bill Perkins, and see how you score against the three of us, as well as other poker players as well. But Hybrid Poker learns about you, the player, which is, this is really cool. As Hybrid Poker gets to know you, it's going to tell you what to work on. There's a link to the IQ test down below. Try it for free. I think you'll like it. So try it out. We are going to call on the button. Wayne, come over the top, Wayne. It's nothing personal, but I have aces, you know what I mean? What a heater, man. What an absolute heater chat. Look at this, dude. Wow, what a spin up. Turn. Turn does not help us. It doesn't hurt us, but it doesn't help us. And we might need help here. But they check, which is what we want to see. We check as well. This is nice because we still have quite a lot of good hands. We have some king x for sure that's very protected. They're not going to want to try and bluff king x probably by going bet check bet because it's going to call mostly. Although the spade is a fun bluff card for them. We have 5k. I think we should bluff this hand. I think we should um, fold this hand probably. I don't think we should fold any kings for the sizing. I think we should fold some eights. We block the flush though. Yeah, I think fold is okay. King nine deuce, small et. Happy with this flop with top pair for sure against Cal Mane. Is this Singapore? Yeah. I don't think we actually need a really big sizing here because of the stack depths and the board texture. I think half pot is fine. A rare half pot on the turn. Open the ace jack here, two off the money. We are ripe to get smashed here. Look at these big old stacks, man. Not an easy spot already. We haven't even seen a flop. Hopefully check check here. Turn's really bad though. King queen, king jack, king 10 suited. These hands that flat pre-flop have just made a pair uh, and don't need to bluff anymore and they check check and they're, they're winning. And then some of the other hands are gonna continue bluffing and get us to fold a better hand in ace jack sometimes. It's just uh... how to play against Simon Matz in this deep. Check raise some, yeah. But is it crazy to check call here? I'm gonna go for a check call. I think check raise works some. There's a lot of bad turns of rivers given how deep we are against a great player here, obviously, as well. Uh, bluff catching with ace 10. Take it down. So I decide to go for the check call, hoping that Simon Matson thinks my check call range is too weak and then they're gonna barrel us, but no, they just give up here. They had a nine, so they just went for thin value, check down. Okay, fair enough. Check again. We like our hand on the turn. Probably the best hand, but uh, we want to check. There's a 10. Too thin to value bet. It's a check. Decide if we want to bluff catch. Uh, here's the thing. Do they check back like Jack 10 and Queen 10 and King 10 on the turn and 10 8? Like 10 8, sure, but like I don't know what those other ones. I think I want to bluff catch here. Jack 8. Okay. Fair, fair, fair. Nice hand. Get through bet from Juan Carlos. We call. Smash the set. On the ace high board, Dottie. Let's go. 
Chick check on the flop. We just bet turn, bet river, I guess. I want to bet a sizing where I don't have like a one pair ace, you know? Against a raise, I think we have to call. We lose to sets of aces, but we beat even value hands that are raising. Like ace 10 could probably raise here, I'd think. Uh, so yeah, we call a raise, but they just fold. Ooh, close to a jam, but I think a flat is better. Um, it gets a triple barrel. We are bluff catching on the river. If it's a check check, then I think we have a pretty easy value bet on the end, I'd say. Um, yeah. I mean, the tough part of this hand is the river, basically. Everything before then is fine. It's a good river. I think it cuts down on, ki uh, on ace-king combo, that value hand. I don't think it completes uh, any two pairs because I think they check. You know, if they had king-7 or king-8 suited, they'd just probably check one of those streets. So I'm not too worried about that card. And we need to shove it two off the money here against Andres Nemeth. This is big. This is big. Take it down. I think we call. I mean, we have pretty top of our range here against Leonid. Cuts down on the ace-king combos. Clubs miss. I like it. Nice. Beautiful stuff, chat. You just love to see that. 16,500 in the 1K. You just love to see it. You do. You love it. River's an eight. We're all in. If it's a set, it's a set. So be it, you know? If it's a set, it's a set. But it's probably ace king or king queen. King seven suited. Hopefully not jack nine of spades. That would have been the end of us. Uh, eight seven suited. Yes. Let's raise it up. The stacks aren't great behind, but it's still a fine hand to raise here, I think. Yeah, it can flop well. Board coverage stuff is kind of nice with it as well. Like, you win some big pots when flops come down low because they don't give us credit for a lot of it. But you can also get three bet from Simon Matson. We want to call here, I think. How about a six on the turn? Would be great. Very small bet. We call. So close. What's our river range look like for bluffing? Missed Broadway spades. We should probably bluff with a spade in our hand. But how much do we float the flop with just one spade? Like king high spade, king queen with a spade, king jack with a spade, king ten with a spade. Yeah, but we don't have those offsuit hands pre-flop. We do need to bluff here, I think. I think we have to bluff here because we just don't have many bluffs. When I think about it, it's just hard to have bluffs again. It just seems like I keep saying that. <laughs> when we think about what offsuit hands call a three bet pre-flop, we just don't really have king jack offsuit or king 10 offsuit, right? Pot's very small in relation. It's ace jack. That is a great start. We'll take that. Let's go. Double it up to 1.9 million. The second quads of the day. Two quads today. I think we're in the money here against Andres Nemeth. I think we definitely want to jam with queen 10 suited. It's just a great hand to jam. Covering for massive bounty as well. Take it down. This is a brutal spot with kings. We check back of the flop, they bet turn, and then they jam river. So they are saying that they have five, six, or spades. And do spades uh, jam? No, I think we have to call here. The reason why is I don't think that flushes go for the over bet that often, basically, you know? I think they're gonna choose a different sizing when the flush completes. And we check back flop, which really disguises the strength of our hand. I wish we had a spade in our hand, but I just think we're not gonna see value sizing shows like this frequently enough. It's, it's definitely a hero call, but I think it's fine. Let's go. Come on, let's go! Yes! They put us in a difficult spot, dude, but it, it was just kind of what we were talking about, right? Which is like, yeah, in theory, you have these over bets, but then people have to find, they, they have to pull the trigger with value in a spot where they'd probably just in practice make more money choosing a different sizing with value. And it's, it, so it creates these imbalances. I think, where it's just like, I don't think when they make the nut flush there, they're gonna go one and a half X pot. I think they're gonna go three quarters pot, which then creates them too bluff heavy. Come on, man, let's go. Sevens are pretty good as well, especially with a $500 bounty in play. On just Nemeth raises, we're going to three bets. Willing to stack off with this bounty in play, this opening range is extremely wide. What I don't know what to do is if they jam, what do I do here? I fold, I think, yeah. I don't think it's worth it to risk our tournament life. But, you know, it's not fun. Hopefully this player triples up. That'd be good. 
just a little nine to stay alive. Beautiful. The bounty remains, and we continue on. Open, get called in two spots, start with a check with ace-queen. For sure, you know, it's a good flop, but like we don't have ace-jack, we don't have ace-ten, we don't have king-queen. They have those hands in their range. Like we're middle of our range here. We want to start with a check call. Checks around, turns a ten, check again. If we have value, it's one street of value. We're not protecting against a munch with our particular hand. Clear spot to check again. We bet 210, we call, and face the tough river bet if it comes in, but comes off with an ace, and we lead one-tenth of pot. Sure, we get called by 10x and by king-queen that are going to check back every time and then do some bluffs sometimes. We are still at 13 in the tournament. And call again. We beat a few bluffs, obviously, with queen high, but we have the flush draw. Don't see a lot of reasons to want to inflate the pot. I think we just call. If it checks to us, do we want to bluff queen seven? We can try and bluff king highs and queen jack, queen nine. But they bet the river, and I think fold is totally fine. We don't have the best hand to attack it on, but I remember opening this player's card and seeing that they had 7k in caches total. When they raise preflop and we go to this flop, they're going to have so much stuff that just missed, right? Like just so many Broadway hands that have nothing. So I'm just going to put in a small raise on the flop and hopefully get those Broadway hands to fold. Turns a deuce, nothing changes. We have garbage. I'm not going to continue betting all in here because I've already folded out a bunch of their garbage, right? If we think they're folding too much to our raise on the flop, then it's like, well, now they're left with a stronger range than they should, should have, which means we need to bluff less, right? So we have already executed our exploits. The game is done for us now. That's the idea. Ah. Oh. Uh, very lucky. A7 here. This gets interesting against a lot of opponents. This bounty's huge, but I don't think we can get it in for this bounty. Against Costia Rays, we have to fold. Against Nemeth Jam, I don't know what to do. It gets an open on the button, it would have been a rejam. And if it folded to us, it was going to be a jam. So there's a lot of all in possibilities there, but now we have a limp. I don't know what the heck to do here, to be honest. I, don't know, I guess like getting 7 to 1, we'll just call out a position, but it's really hard to play this pot profitably out of position, to be honest. It's just hard. Great, I moved up to high stakes, been crushing cash lately. Let's go. Let's go, man. Nice. I'm glad to hear that. Check raising here with not a great draw on the queen low low, but enough. Check turn. Yes, we've made the nuts, but it's a check turn. Not the nuts, but close enough to the nuts. Against Andres, like, I don't think we can fold with a 750 bounty in play. It's the thing. First place is 6K in the prize pool. It's 1175 bounty, dude. 1175. We don't fold, man. It's just too big. Like, this is like one sixth of first place. Getting two to one. I mean, yeah, we're not doing well, but like, this bounty is just huge. Good luck. We call. Eight, eight, eight. Or seven or five for the chop. Jack's not it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it sucks. Like, I don't want to call, but this bounty is one sixth of first place. Of course, there's extra bounties in play and stuff, but I think it's too much. I think it's too much to fold. So now we find ourselves as the short stack here with no fold equity. So would you ever play live cash games on like Hustler at the Lodge? Yes. Would I play them in the next uh, couple months? No, but I would. Stay tuned, my friend. Open nines, get a call, queen jack six. Uh, just bet fold, I guess. Super 215 is dead. We're going to get the 22 carnival now. There we fold. All right, here we go. Good luck in our main bay, 840. 12 left, 1184 cashed. We've got 2,000 cash when you add the bounty, or just less, I think. Ace jack 7 5. Wow. Sick. I guess just like really values this bounty. It's just like going to limp call off. I think we lose. Unless it's a 10. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. 2,084 GG. Part of the thing that's kind of cool is like if you guys have been watching the stream, right, and you want to take a poker trip, like, yeah, you can go to Vegas. Of course, and Vegas is a lot of fun. But like you could you could come to Montreal for the weekend and we could play, you know, like you could play on the stream. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, it's obviously fun to watch high stakes and really, really massive pots, but it's not sustainable for a high amount of hours every single week. So like, I totally don't mind playing one, two sometimes, playing two, five most of the time, playing some five, 10, playing some Omaha. Like I don't mind doing that. And that when people come to Montreal that have watched the stream for a long time and want to play, we can play in the same game you know, for like six hours and you can be on the stream. Like that is kind of cool. In my head, it's kind of like a long meetup game. You know what I mean? Instead of lasting for 
one day where there's like 200 people that come at once for like one four or five hour session. It's like, no, there's a continuous meetup game and whenever it fits into your schedule, you can come and play and we can chat and hang out and play poker, you know, at like reasonable stakes for you, which is kind of cool, I think. But you know, if it was my choice, I would play like 510. You know, I think like 510 with straddles sometimes is like a good level to play a lot of hours, I'd say. Probably it'll mostly play a little smaller than that, but that's okay too. I don't mind. Eights against King Queen, we just lose back to back hands here and we're dead. Unless it's an eight, it's not. It's so hard. Look at the two legends of the game here, man. The two absolute legends of the game. 700? Yeah, I like 700. Nicholas Estet and Simon Matson, the two legends. And Lena 900 just busted 12th place in EPT Prague. What a gangster. Good luck, chat. It's just, it's just a three hands up in the air, unlucky, man. It's just unlucky. There's nothing you can do. 25 blinds deep. 